Hey there, it's you again, and it's me again, Peter Alsop. On this week's Songs to Chew podcast, we'll listen to one of my more inventive musical compositions called Just Capital. I added it to my River of Life album because it fit with the theme of trying to figure out how we might make some changes in some of the systems that surround us as we float down our River of Life together. Many of our behaviors are dictated by what those systems require of us in order to survive with their sets of rules and stories. The song we'll chew on today is about looking closely at our capitalistic financial and economic system to see if we might want to make some changes there that will benefit us human beings living here together on this planet. I decided to write this song after I saw a television interview with a woman on Staten Island. It was right after that huge hurricane, Superstorm Sandy, had smashed New Jersey and New York along the Atlantic coast in late October of 2012. She was an elderly woman, wandering through the remnants of her home, which had been flattened by the storm. She was sifting through the remnants of her house, holding one of her few unbroken cups, as the interviewer asked her what her plans were now that her house had been completely destroyed. (sighs) She heaved a sigh and said, Well, I don't know. My daughter and her kids live over on Long Island, and my son is in Connecticut. Another sigh. (sighs) I probably should just die now. I've lost everything. I'm a psychologist, and I've seen lots of people go through traumatic losses. This woman's grief for the loss of her home and her independence was huge and overwhelming. I felt so sad for her, not only because of the devastating loss of her life as she had known it, but also because it was so sad to see that even though this woman had grown children and grandchildren still alive and well and even living nearby, she thought that dying was her best option. I know she was under extreme duress, probably financial as well as emotional, And perhaps that's why it sounded like her possessions were the most important thing in her life. Without them, she could see no point in going on. I'm guessing her financial distress had been on her mind in some form or other before the storm hit, and she may not have been thinking of her family as a safe haven. One definition of capital is our wealth, whether in money or property owned by a business, an individual firm, or corporation. Basically, it's our possessions. But capitalism is the economic system within which we operate. And that system offers us a limited number of stories to choose from to understand how we fit into the rest of our society. Capitalism curtails the thousands of other possible stories we might dream about or concoct by hedging in our own stories with its limiting parameters. The stories that we have that we use to keep our lives on track can be taken over. For instance, a lawyer who works hard to support their family makes $200 an hour and bills his or her clients in 15-minute increments for that fee all day long as they work at their firm. That lawyer finds himself sitting down to read a storybook to their four-year-old daughter before bed that night, and they're bothered about the pressure they still feel from their day because they need to get back to one of their big cases, and they plan to do that after she goes to sleep. But when it takes a half hour instead of 15 minutes, they catch themselves thinking about how that half hour of their valuable time reading a kid's book could have earned another 100 bucks if they had chosen to work instead. Was it worth it? That's how we learn to constantly question ourselves in a capitalistic world. As my friend Utah Phillips used to say, we learn to pass everything around us through a cash nexus to see what it's worth. And that leaves us not knowing how to value things in our lives using our own judgment. We always look outside of ourselves for those answers. And that's one of the main mindsets or stories that we absorb from living under capitalism. What's my ROI, my return on investment? What will the market bear? Should I charge more or less? And as we go through our daily tasks, asking these kinds of questions, adding and subtracting all the various and overwhelming factors to consider, we can drive ourselves and others completely nuts. Doesn't this sound like a system for which we might want to make some changes? And if we really ponder that question, what is it worth? What are the experiences and loving moments that are the real valuables in our lives? What will we be wishing we had done more of when we are on our deathbeds? It won't be having more stuff, I assure you. No, no, I can't die now. I haven't accumulated enough stuff yet. (laughs) So here, from my River of Life album, is Just Capital. The other night I had a dream Seems like yesterday Fire and flood ran through my home Swept all my things away The stuff I own lay scattered Every single thing I sat there in the rubble And this voice began
began to sing It's just capital All the stuff you own It's just capital Now your capital's all gone It's just capital It was more stuff than you need It's just capital And you are still alive, you see It's just capital Just capital Thought I was going crazy This had to be a dream The whole thing seemed so real But I could not even scream I'm no capitalist But without my stuff, I'm dead Then that voice began to sing again In my head It's just capital Insecure securities It's just capital See the forest, not the trees It's just capital You've been lost in the woods It's just capital You've been sold a bill of goods It's just capital Just capital I woke up in a cold sweat Tried to write this down There are certain things we have to have If we're gonna stick around Food and clothing on our backs And the money bankers loan us But I wonder if it's possible Can the things that we own, own us? It's just capital Now I think I understand It's just capital what I own's not who I am It's just capital We can never get enough It's just capital But I don't need all this stuff It's just capital Just capital As long as we're alive, there is hope and we go on It's the people who we love that help us make it through the dawn The outstretched hand, the gentle touch, loving things that people do Community, not capital, is what will pull us through It's just capital if my capital is gone It's just capital Well, hey, my life can still go on It's just capital Yes, God gave me a shove It's just capital So now I invest in love Invest in love Can we invest in love? My thanks to my buddies, Greg Hilfman, for his electronic drum tracks, Jimmy McVeigh for his inspired slide guitar and bass playing, and to Ellen Gear for her intricate harmonies. Humans have survived as long as we have by belonging to communities. In the face of unequivocal approaching global disasters, we need to hone our own skills for healing and making our communities healthier. And these skills can be learned right now in our own families and organizations. They can be put to work right away in our states and countries to help others when they need help. And when we need help, it's fair to expect that they, in turn, will help us when we need it. But if you're a parent, you already know that sometimes our lot is one-sided. Because building community, loving and caring for other people, is not a contract. It's a way of life. Our return on investment when we do this is not something that we put in the bank. It's something that we hold in our hearts. Giving is something that nurtures our souls. Chewing on this discussion about capitalism stories, its pros and cons, could easily go on for weeks and years it's a big world out there with a million stories. Hopefully, as we go forward, we can each choose stories for ourselves that will help us put together a world without as much mean-spiritedness as we've seen lately. I'm going to close up today with some wisdom from my old pal, Utah Phillips. Peter, he'd say, you know, you don't have to buy kids stuff in order for them to have strong stories. Matter of fact, it just gets them thinking that they need to have stuff in order to have a story. The capitalists who think they own those Star Wars stories, for instance... They want us to believe that we need to buy our kids a plastic replica of Han Solo's Millennial Falcon spaceship in order for our kids to have those stories too. But that's a lie. 
exactly opposite of the truth. Because once we have the story, we don't need to buy their stuff. We can make our own millennial falcon out of an old cigar box. Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia can be pipe cleaners or clothespins because we already have the story. And I would add to that, it helps our kids build their own creative skills and imagination when they have to think outside of the box, literally in the case of Utah's spaceship. When we hold our own stories about justice and fairness, that's the first step to figuring out what we need to do to make those stories real for ourselves and everyone else in the world. I'm Peter Alsop. Thanks for stopping by today. Please spread the word about my Songs to Chew podcast if you would. I'd appreciate it. And I'll see you next week for another episode. Bye for now.